Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 9th of April, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that easily by using the Alaska Weather Information Line. 1-800-472-0391 is a phone number to keep handy. Weather.gov slash Alaska is a great way to find us online. And, of course, if you can't find what you're looking for, I offer my email to you. Uh, David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is an easy way to find me, and I'll do my very best to serve you any way I possibly can in finding information that helps you and your community stay on top of the weather situation where you are. Let's take a look around Alaska today, around Yakutat, Cape Yakutat. Boy, a lot of clouds moving over the Wrangell St. Elias region there today. You can see what looks like uh, some showers in the region and maybe some a uh, little bit of a wave cloud moving through there. A little hard to tell in uh, just a static picture, but uh, certainly kind of a, a cloudier picture there as low pressure and a front was working through the north and eastern Gulf today. Fairly mild there around Yakutat this afternoon. And as we look at the FAA weather camera there up in Eagle, a little bit warmer, and you can see a totally different type of cloud. These are cumulus clouds, of course, one of the three main cloud families, cumulus, cirrus, and stratus. This is a cumulus cloud, and those are the ones that bubble up in the daytime heat. The interesting part for me is that this is happening of course, in, uh, well, let's say mid-April, I guess. But we've already had a thunderstorm. We had one down in the Copper River Valley because of some of the heat uh, moving through the region yesterday. So uh, no surprise that uh, we've got the uh, daytime heating type clouds out there. Uh, this is certainly a, a sign that uh, spring and uh, eventually summer are rapidly approaching there. 56 degrees in Eagle this afternoon. And around Dutch Harbor on Alaska, uh, from the Dutch haystack position there, you see 43 degrees over the harbor there, still got some snow across the low top mountains there of the eastern Aleutians and otherwise uh, a low deck of clouds. These two are cumulus, this is a little bit more of a stratocumulus kind of look there, kind of a blanket layer of those puffy clouds again, so a little bit of a combination of two of those main cloud families this afternoon. And that of course, again from our FAA aviation weather cameras around Alaska, we can't do it without the FAA, so we certainly appreciate that and know how much aviators and mariners alike here uh, depend on those cameras. Here's a look at the fire danger across Alaska. The good news today, no significant fire risk right now that's showing up on the map. Now, this is just a matter of time before this changes in a significant fashion, with generally being one of the drier times of the year and certainly ahead of schedule as far as snow melt goes and the amount of snowpack itself that we're melting away. Uh, fire danger, of course, will be on the increase in a matter of days, if not weeks. But for right now, today, this moment, doing okay. So be careful out there if you are burning anything at all, and always check for the latest conditions before you start that burn pile. Here is a look at satellite picture this afternoon. You can see a broad area of low pressure across the north and western Gulf that's sweeping a front into the eastern Gulf, and that's what we're talking about with the clouds right over Yakutat and Cape Yakutaga. As this is moving north and east, we get that onshore flow continuing into southeastern Alaska, and you're due for several waves of cloud cover and maybe some showers in the next couple days, but you're also due for a little more heat and sunshine. But it's not going to happen for everyone all at the same time. In fact, as we go through the next couple days, some areas will get some sunshine, and then some other areas will get some cool, cloudy weather, and then we're going to flip it the next day. So it'll kind of even out a little bit, but be prepared for some changing conditions in southeast uh, toward the end of the week. Out across the west, we have one area of low pressure south and west of Shemya, and another much stronger region here south of Adak and Unalaska Dutch Harbor. This is going to bring some gale conditions to most of the bearing most of the chain and sweep eastward as we go through the rest of the week. In the meantime, you can see kind of the blow off, the moisture that's being pushed out into the eastern interior and kind of the leftovers that are working their way up the west coast. Overall, this is again one of the drier points in the year, so we shouldn't expect any widespread or heavy precipitation from uh, storm after storm after storm. But what we are seeing is uh, kind of an active period shifting back into the eastern Gulf and across the North Pacific crossing from west to east. So that trend does continue there. As we look up across the north, you can see some cloud cover across the Chukchi Coast and the eastern Beaufort Sea. Uh, in those regions, we're mainly watching for some low clouds and a little bit of fog, perhaps some light snow. That'll be the trend there for the next couple of days. These temperatures certainly are cool enough to support that. Look for a high across the Arctic Ocean that's sweeping in a north and easterly flow inland, and of course that's trapping that cool, shallow layer on the north side of the Brooks Range. Some of that is making its way over and around Arctic Village, uh, maybe as far south as Fort Yukon, you might see some light snow 
this afternoon. Here's our low pressure system across the north and western Gulf. That's holding around 999 millibars, give or take. The front itself is moving toward Prince William Sound and over southeastern Alaska. And if you look carefully here across the west, you can see two low pressure systems, the strongest of which is at 965. That's still south of the chain. A trough of low pressure lies across the interior, and with that we expect to see a scattering of snow showers in the region. High pressure is trying to set up and hold across the upper Tanana and the upper Yukon valleys. That's around 116 millibars. Low pressure across the north and eastern Gulf will gradually diminish, and the focus is going to shift on the low south of the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern chain. That's sitting around 977 millibars. The low out across the western chain, about 984. You'll see some breaks in the clouds around southwestern Alaska, primarily Bristol Bay and up toward Nunavak Island. But that brief sh break, <laughs> the break should be brief. Try saying that five times fast. And low pressure will continue across southwest to drag in moisture over Bristol Bay, ending the break, again, making it brief. And low pressure south of the central chain at 961 millibars will reinforce the wind and the gales that you'll see across parts of the Alaska Peninsula and the North Pacific waters. Low pressure sitting across the Gulf will hold around 1,005 millibars. Here's the important part of what I'm about to say. If this holds as a triple point area of low pressure where we have an occlusion, warmer air, and then colder air, if this holds and works its way northward a little bit more, that's going to significantly impact the amount of wind we see across the northern parts of the Gulf including Prince William Sound. So as I go into tomorrow, the first thing I'm going to look at with the forecasters here is see if this is going to show more of a triple point type setup uh, into Thursday. If that's the case, you're going to see winds go way up across the forecast areas for Prince William Sound, probably back toward uh, the Barren Islands and maybe into north and eastern sections of the Gulf because this will have an opportunity to strengthen a lot more than what we're showing right now. So if you're in the northern Gulf, Prince William Sound, down past Resurrection Bay into the Barren Islands, you're going to want to keep a watch on this area of low pressure here and see if that changes in the forecast at all. Across southeast, northern areas tomorrow probably get some sunshine. Central and southern parts of southeast, probably a better chance for rain showers. But notice there is a heaping handful left for everybody else as that moves northward. Across the interior, snow showers hit and miss. Really nothing too significant it looks like, but still holding on to some of that cold across the north slope. As we get into Thursday, that goes away. It looks like it's going to be warm enough for rain showers, if not just drizzle across the north slope and the interior. And once again, our low pressure system has kind of been absorbed into this area of the frontal boundary itself, which is good for wind. But if you don't see that as we're looking through our weather information in the next couple days, remember that low, if it's still hanging on, is really going to uh, bring the winds up quite a bit. As we get into Thursday, another round of rain approaches the outer coast of southeast. You may see some snow showers across the higher terrain of Wrangell St. Elias around the Chugach into the Kenai Mountains, but most areas are going to be dealing with warm weather, a 970 millibar low across the southern Bering Sea, sweeping stronger winds across Bristol Bay, Nunavak Island, St. Paul, St. George, and then our northerly colder flow working its way back into the central and western chain, places like Attu probably dealing with rain, if not all snow. Well, let's take a look at temperatures. 30s overnight for southeast, mainly uh, almost 40 degrees, really. Uh, lower 30s for most of south central, just pushing the freezing mark, if not below. 36 in Kodiak, 29 for Fairbanks, and temps from 5 to 10 below across the north slope, including Utkiavik and Wainwright. 20s for Norton Sound, uh, 20s and 30s for southwest, the Alaska Peninsula, out toward Dutch Harbor and Alaska, closing in on 40 degrees. 34 in St. Paul, up to 41 by Wednesday afternoon. 40s and 50s for the middle Tanana Valley, including places like North Pole. 51 in Eagle, and about the same in Northway, close to 50 degrees in southeast. 46 in Kodiak, King Sam and Dillingham, almost 50 degrees. Bethel, about 47, and Wainwright near 8 degrees. Overnight lows there. Warm up considerably Thursday morning, about zero or so, maybe even warmer, 20s and 30s for South Central, 40 in Kodiak. Southeast, you're looking at temps at or above freezing, closer to 40 around Sitka, 25 in Eagle. Ambler and Bettles in the 20s overnight, 30s for Southwest, and mid to upper 30s for the Chain and the Alaska Peninsula, and warmer again in the Tanana Valley Thursday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On aviation weather now, IFR concerns will continue around St. Paul, St. George, and up to St. Matthew. And around uh, many parts of the central and eastern chain, we'll be looking at continued 
IFR, especially in the morning hours, widespread marginal conditions across the Gulf, especially the north and eastern Gulf Coast, with IFR across some of the higher terrain in southeast, all the way up to Haines and Skagway and above. Across the Brooks Range and south into the Yukon Valley and the upper Yukon Valley, watch for a widespread IFR there into Kotzebue Sound and northern parts of Norton Sound, including areas around Nome and across to Deering. And then across the north coast, expect uh, MVFR conditions there in the morning. That will linger into the afternoon, but you should see Widespread improvements for IFR across the Brooks Range, uh, the upper Koyukuk and the Yukon Valleys there, and also into the West Coast. No big change out across the southern Bering Sea for tomorrow afternoon, though, o or for St. Paul and St. George. Around Sand Point and east and west, you'll find widespread instrument flight rule conditions there, as well as parts of the Gulf, including southern sections of Kodiak Island, including Akiak. And out around uh, the northern Gulf Coast into southeast, uh, generally MVFR conditions should be expected there. That includes Prince William Sound, and by Thursday morning, we're right back in the thick of it again. Things go down for St. Paul and St. George on Flying Day and across the Alaska Peninsula into Kodiak Island in the central Gulf. Look for marginal conditions across all of the southeastern archipelago and across the north and western coast. IFR conditions there and for most of the Seward Peninsula and into uh, the upper end of Koyukuk Valley. Across Thursday afternoon, you'll see a little less improvement than we did on Wednesday afternoon. There will be additional areas of clearing, though, across southwest into the central and eastern interior. Northwest, the Kobuk and Noatak Valley should improve dramatically, but IFR conditions are going to linger across the north slope from Kaktovik all the way down toward Atkasuk and westward through uh, some of your uh, northern passes there. And across St. Paul and St. George, look for IFR conditions for most of the bearing. And across the northern Gulf Coast, with IFR setting back in across northern sections of southeast uh, and also lingering around Yakutat with some improvement across central and southern parts of southeast. Let's take a look at your pass conditions in detail. I think tomorrow you'll start off with IFR around Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass with marginal conditions developing by the afternoon. So there is some hope for improvement during the day. Lake Clark may hover at marginal levels there through most of your Wednesday, but Merrill may start at IFR, but both areas should end up at least in marginal territory. Rainy Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions throughout the day. Windy Pass probably starts at IFR, but then sees a dramatic improvement toward VFR. Isabel Pass likely holds at marginal levels most of the day. Isabel Pass, or I mean Metasta Pass, we expect to see marginal levels really through most of your Wednesday, and really no big change from that for Tanita Pass as we go. Portage leans over toward IFR as we go throughout your day, and Chilkoot and White Pass, a start at IFR with some minor improvements for your Wednesday. Freezing levels indicate that surface freezing lines hovering around Nunavak Island to St. Matthew, uh, but just aloft, that warm air aloft is kind of lurking down a little bit further southward, trying to nudge its way upward again. Uh, two to 4,000 foot levels, maybe even 6,000 feet here across Nikolsky to Unalaska, Dutch Harbor, and almost as far east as Sand Point. And then some warm air aloft trying to nudge its way into central and southern parts of southeast levels there around 2,000 feet. Icing potential is also creeping upward there below about 2,000 feet to above 7,000 feet across the north slope. That means you're going to have a layer of about 5,000 feet. Never do math live on TV. That's a big rule. But about 5,000 feet there where icing is probably not as likely to occur across the north slope. So if you can get up in that safe zone there, you might have a little better time. And above six to 7,000 feet across south central, and that includes Prince William Sound and parts of the Chugach Range and the Anchorage Bowl, as well as a large part of the Susitna Valley. Across the central and western parts of the chain, above 9,000 feet before you run into isolated moderate, and then uh, a greater risk there out across the open waters of the Gulf. What's the jet stream doing right now? High pressure sitting across the North Pacific, nudging that warm air up into south and western Alaska. Wind speeds between 65 and 110 knots. A northwesterly flow crossing the northern Gulf and south central around 50 to 75 knots. So basically we're on the eastern side of a ridge of high pressure, which is what you see across the Gulf. At 9,000 feet, southerly winds are in charge. You can see a high pressure ridge across the western and Canadian Rockies there coming up with southerly winds across the mainland. Low pressure out across the southern Bering Sea. Wind speeds there anywhere from 50 to about 75 knots at 9 and 3,000 feet. So a lot of wind blowing across the chain. Gales widespread out there. South and westerlies moving across the Gulf and we'll keep light south winds around 3,000 feet. And also for southeastern Alaska, you'll see those winds coming in around 15 to 20 from that south and easterly direction at this level. So what about turbulence? We expect to see a little bit of chop there from uh, Ukiavik eastward toward Kaktovik and the Alcan border. That's generally below 4,000 feet. Below 5,000 feet, though, for some of our southwest higher terrain, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, most of the southwestern capes, the Alaska Peninsula, and all the way out through the central Aleutians tomorrow. Hello. 
I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. I have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash, so I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe. And my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space, too! I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. You're welcome.
soon it will be my time to shine. In outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V541 launch vehicle. A big rocket, woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts, map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome. I can't wait. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And on the today's sea ice pack, you'll notice that the sea ice conditions continue to change in a, uh, in a fashion that's reducing the leading edge of the ice there uh, further and further north. Around St. Lawrence Island here, marginal ice off to the east, all the way up to Wales now and inside of Norton Sound, reducing ice there across the upper parts of Norton Sound. We're still looking at some uh, higher concentration ice south of Nome, but that's really about it. Still some areas of shorefast ice north of Monarch and south and west of Unalakleet, and then not a whole lot left as you head into Etol and Strait and north of St. Matthew there. So uh, conditions continue to change. Be careful if you're out among the ice and certainly out on the ice in coastal locations. Let's take a look at southeast now. Uh, winds will be fairly light across the inside passage as we get through Wednesday, especially Lynn Canal. Southerlies, five knots, two foot seas there, three foot seas in the Clarence Strait, and light outer coast winds there of 10 to 15 knots tops. So you're looking at 10 to 11 foot seas. As you get into Thursday, though, you can see the winds coming up from the south and east, 25 to 30 knots there, pushing the uh, threshold uh, a little bit for gales, towing the line as you get toward Yakutat, and then we're into gales as you move out toward Prince William Sound. 35 knots, uh, 12 to 13 foot seas in that direction. Inside passage waters, though, still light winds and generally small seas, 2 to 3 feet, anywhere from 10 to 15 knot winds on the inside. Across south central, inside Prince William Sound, not bad. Easterlies, 10 knots, 2 foot seas there. Northerlies, light coming in across Cook Inlet, picking up a little bit as you head past Clam Gulch and down toward Homer. Uh, 20 to 30 knots, 7 to 8 foot seas generally, and then an easterly flow across the Gulf and outside of Resurrection Bay. As you get into Thursday, though, uh, that's where we start getting into the wind. And remember, if that low pressure system really spins up, this is going to change. But right now we're seeing easterlies, gales inside of Prince William Sound on Thursday, and 45 to 50 knots across the north and western Gulf. Storm force as you get in across the Barrens. Uh, you're looking at uh, 16 to 18 foot seas there with a south and easterly flow and stronger northeasterlies, of course, coming down through Cook Inlet, 30 to 40 knots with seas following at 8 to 10 feet. For Bristol Bay, look for easterlies, 35 knots, 7 to 10 foot seas across the region, an easterly flow all the way down from Kodiak Island into the Alaska Peninsula, and about 35 knots in most areas, 9 to 13 9 to 19 foot seas, I should say, for your Wednesday with gales continuing there. And then much stronger southwesterlies blowing in as we get into Thursday. You're looking at seas coming up to 25, 32, 40 feet there south of Sand Point. And winds will be considerably less, but stronger across Bristol Bay and the north side of the Alaska Peninsula, anywhere from 30 to about 35 knots across the region. 
For Wednesday, look for west and southwesterlies for the central and eastern chain. A little bit of an easterly flow feeding back in north of an Alaska and Dutch Harbor. You'll see seas around 11 feet there, 8-foot seas out in the west. Notice that northerly flow cutting in back behind the main low-pressure circulation here that's moving across the chain. So a lot of changes during the day on Wednesday. Don't get stuck on any one direction. As we get into Thursday, north and westerly winds coming in behind the system, 30 to 35 knots with 15-foot seas. West and southwesterlies across the central and eastern chain. Notice the strongest winds and highest seas holding south of the chain from Atka to Nikolsky all the way out toward Unalaska. And that west and southwesterly flow will diminish somewhat across the Bering Sea coast waters, but it is going to be uh, still on that stronger side there, 10 to about 16 foot seas expected in the vicinity of that low pressure system. For the west coast, an offshore flow is blowing into low pressure down across the chain. What that means for you is 8 to 11 foot seas on either side of Nunavak Island. Easterlies over the ice in Norton Sound, what's left of it, and 15 knots south of St. Lawrence Island with two foot seas. Easterlies blowing into St. Paul and St. George with a 12 foot sea, and that improves as we get into Thursday around the Privolos. But that northeasterly wind elsewhere picks up a little bit more, 30 to 35 knots, anywhere from 7 to 15 foot seas, the highest of which will be at around St. Matthew. And it looks like uh, 25 knots there inside of Norton Sound with a two foot sea in the open waters there across the west coast. For the North Slope and the coastal waters there, the Arctic coast looking at easterlies over the ice. For the Chukchi coast, anywhere from 20 to about 25 knots, generally north of Cape Lisburn to Wainwright is where you see the strongest winds. Across the Kotzebue Sound region, generally southerlies, 10 knots over the ice there. That turns to a northeasterly flow on Thursday. Easterlies across the Chukchi coast, and then the winds pick up across the Beaufort. About 25 knots there as you get into your Thursday. Recapping tonight's weather, low pressure is going to be the strongest out here across the Aleutians. This is working into the Gulf. There will be several waves of gale force winds moving across, periods of rain and clouds for parts of southeast. Some of you will get some sunshine in the next couple days. Now look for a reinforcing blast of uh, stronger winds and waves coming across the North Pacific and moving toward Bristol Bay in the eastern chain, the Alaska Peninsula. As that happens, it drags the front across the Gulf and sends another round of some rain uh, with a little bit of sunshine ahead of it for southeast. And that should keep the clouds coming across south central, southwest, and warmer weather for many in the interior and the North Slope as we move toward the end of the week. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. Remember, you can always find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska anytime. Good night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.